Now we're moving into one-handed snags. Now, anyone in the audience know why we practice one-handed snags? Why, or well, why do you see a lot of collegiate centers, pro centers, international centers going up with one hand? Any guesses? Nope. Oh, yes. Yeah, you're higher, right? Yep, so by going up with one hand, you're higher and you can get the ball quicker. So we want to make sure when we're teaching our kids one-handed snags that we're teaching them the proper mechanics. Because I see a lot of one-handed snags like this, or like this, or like this. So it's really important that you guys, just like anything else, it's muscle memory, it's repetition. We're using the same form every single time. So when we go up with one hand, really important that whatever, if you're pushing, you're pulling, you're drawing to yourself, whatever it is, we need that hand all the way at the bottom when we go up with one hand. If we are choked, we might as well put two hands on our stick. So you need to be as tall as you can be. I typically have my pinky off my stick. Second thing, we need our arms straight. If you're gonna go up with one hand and you're bent, again, you might as well just go up with two hands. So we need to get full extension. I swear, like half the pictures I see of me from college, I'm like this. Okay, so we wanna make sure we're fully extended so that we are reaching the ball at its highest point. The biggest thing is once the ball is in our stick, we cannot hang around out here, outside our shoulders, okay? That is a lesson that I learned quickly when I got to Maryland and Katie Schwartzman checked my stick out of my hands the first day of practice. I was no longer in high school where I could get away with this or it was a foul. So the analogy that I use with my kids whenever I teach them from this big to high school is pretend like you're in a water slide, like the single individual person water slides where everything's super tight. We, the second the ball is in our stick, need to get in that slide. We need to use our body to protect ourselves. The wider we are, especially with one hand, the more likely you are to get checked. And the higher up you get, so high school to college, college to pro, pro to international, the less likely it's a foul. Okay, so we need to teach our kids from an early age to not rely on the refs, but use your body to your advantage. Protect yourselves. So what I like to teach is like the punch. So the second the ball is in my stick, I'm punching down, I'm pulling down with that bottom hand because that is the quickest way to drive it, not only in between my shoulders, but in the center of my body. I see a lot of kids and coaches teach like the big pull, but if I have someone on my back end, I'm going to get checked. So we need to have quick hands, strong hands here, pull down in between your shoulders. Your shoulders are your best friend. One of my teammates at Maryland, we were talking about stick protection on the drop. And the turp is the Maryland mascot, and of course that's a turtle. And she said, get in your turtle shell. So we need to be here, get in, shoulders over stick, protect ourselves. We all know that sticks fly when, we're, when the draw goes up. So not only do we need to protect the ball, but we need to protect ourselves. The quickest way to do that is to drive in between our shoulders. So how to practice one-handed snags. Something that I used to do, or I found myself doing, especially at club tournaments, high school practice, is just walking around and doing this. So tossing the ball up, reaching up, getting back down. Little did I know that I was actually not only strengthening my wrist, but I was making myself really comfortable 
in this space. As centers, we need to be as comfortable here as we are here playing. So anything we can do to get comfortable, not only snagging the ball, but finding the ball, bringing it in, is key. So to start super basic, just nice and easy, straight up, working on that punch down. So we're here, through. Making sure we go both hands, because depending on whether we push or pull that time, we might have our left hand at the bottom. I see a lot of kids who push, try to punch their hand down to snag the ball out of the air. If you are quick enough, that's a great option, but I tell my younger kids to just get comfortable snagging it out lefty. Not only does it make you more versatile, but it helps your stick work and your non-dom hand. From there, once we get comfortable just snagging straight up, we can add a jump. Now the jump just gets us higher. So again, we're maximizing our height. Winning the draw is about half seconds and half inches. Getting there a little bit quicker than your opponent. I played against some of the best centers in the world. And they, it's, we all try to do the same thing. Get there before the other person as quickly as I can. So we want to make sure when we're incorporating that jump, that we're helping ourselves get there as quickly as we can. When we jump, it's really important that you know your body. So I, there's not like one clear cut, oh, this is how we jump to win the draw out of the air. Because my legs might be, tall, might be longer than my teammates, but her arms might be longer than mine. But the other girl's vertical jump might be better than mine. So it's all about knowing your body and knowing the timing it takes to get to that point. So we want to make sure our goal is as the ball, whoops, as the ball is falling, we're reaching up, snagging it. We do not want to jump too early because then you are on the ground before the ball even starts to fall. We don't want to fall too late, I mean jump too late because we're passing the ball as it's already dropping. Your goal is to hit it here. Notice how I'm also bringing it into my shoulder before I hit the ground. Some girls will do this, do the hard work, come down, try to cradle, check. So we want to get comfortable jumping, pulling, bringing it in before we even hit the ground. You won't be fully in, but you'll be starting that momentum towards you. Making sure we do it with both left and right. Nice and easy. As a coach, when my centers are doing this, I walk around and I go early, late, on time, late, late, early. And that helps them start to recognize, oh, I was late, oh, I need to jump a little sooner. Or, um, oh, I jumped too early, I need to hold off a second. And then once they get it, they pretty much are on point. So especially when you're first starting out, going around and telling them at least from my perspective as both a player who's had that happen and a coach, it kind of helped me and my kids figure it out a little easier. Once you get comfortable with the one hand jumping, one hand stagnant, then we can start to get a little trickier. So as I said before, not every ball that I drew went straight up where I could catch it exactly where I wanted to. Sometimes the balls are across my body. Sometimes they're super wide and I have to stretch and be an X. So it's important that when you guys are training for one-handed snags, we're working in all different scenarios. So you could start super far in front. You can go outside across your body. We can go outside this shoulder. If we're going behind, you have to turn and find, whoops. Making sure we're comfortable 360 degrees around. The two I do the most are across my body and outside my shoulder. If we're going outside our same shoulder, so let's say I'm drawing, it goes here. We want to work on cradling and in. So we're here 
Whenever you are getting the draw, we want to see the back side of our stick. Too often I see girls trying to scoop an awkward draw like this. You're going to open yourselves up to getting checked because it is so hard to bring it in. We want to see the back of our stick and immediately cradle in. So for our right, for our people, sorry, when you're going outside your right shoulder, outside your left shoulder, we're tossing, flipping, cradling in. So now it's not as much of a punch, it's more of that quick cradle across and in. So we're whoop, here, through. Once you get comfortable, you can start adding a jump, but especially when we're learning, we want to just stay stagnant. If we're going across our body, so sometimes I draw and I'm here. Again, we want to see the back of our stick so we're able to scoop around and come into that left shoulder. So we're here, scoop, through. Across, scoop, through. Bringing it to the closest shoulder, oops, sorry, closest shoulder possible. Want to make sure we're going lefty as well, or non-dom as well. So for me, that's my left, bringing it in, bringing it in. Once you get comfortable with one hand stagnant, adding the jumps, adding the weighted sticks, adding the weighted balls is key. That's going to just help you get more and more comfortable. Again, it's mainly repetition that's going to get you the most comfortable. Any questions as far as one-handed stuff goes?